Inflation is easing, but myriad market forces continue to drive up the cost of tea. Regional scarcity is the most recent concern. According to the Tea Board of India, tea prices at auction in 2024 have increased 20% year over year. Prices averaged $2.61 per kilo in June. Production declined by more than 30% in May as flooding in Assam slowed the harvest. Extreme summer temperatures in many tea lands, including India, have since lowered yields per hectare. According to the Commerce Ministry, exports during the first four months of the year increased by 37% to 92 million kilos. Half of India's tea is harvested between July and October. Fuel and fertilizer, the rising cost of labor, and impairments due to conflict in the Middle East are impacting freight costs. According to the Drury Composite Index, booking a 40-foot container topped $5,901 in July 2024, up 315% compared to pre-pandemic rates. Tea exports declined 5% to 1.7 million metric tons in 2023. Kenya was the largest tea exporter by volume with a 30.1% share of mainly black, while China, the world's top green tea supplier, accounted for 21.2% of export volume. Sri Lanka at 13.8% and India at 13% are tied at third. In 2022, the world average price for globally exported tea was $7.09 per kilo. That dollar metric reflects a 61.1% increase compared to the pandemic-impaired $4.40 per kilo average in 2021. A dozen of the top 15 exporters report declining unit prices in 2022, with the unit price of Chinese tea exports down 10.9% to $5.54 per kilo compared to 2021. Tea exported by Japan, much of which was matcha, earned the highest value by far, averaging $26.72 per kilo, followed by Taiwan oolongs valued at $12.40 per kilo average. Malawi, Vietnam, Indonesia, Kenya, Rwanda, and India exported the least costly teas that year. Tea imports face lower volumes and some unusual trade impediments at the consumer's end of the supply chain as well. UK tea importers must spend more delivering tea from Asia and Africa. Shipping companies that previously used the Suez Canal are forced to transit the Cape of Hope. Shortages are minimal, but transport has greatly impacted the average retail price of tea. This week, the UK government calculated tea drinkers are spending an average of 263 pence, that's about $3.40 in U.S. dollars, for 250 grams of tea bags, the highest RPI since 1986, when the Office for National Statistics began compiling its monthly report on tea prices. Consider Russia. Tea is the nation's most popular beverage, but little is grown domestically. The country was once the world's largest importer by value, but economic and political misfortunes limit consumers' spending for what most consider a necessity. Like consumers in many countries, the Russians traded down for their cuppa. As of mid-2024, the retail price for black tea in Russia ranges from approximately $9.51 to $21.88 per kilo. That's about $4.31 to $9.92 per pound. In Russian rubles, this translates to about 766 to about 1,763 rubles per kilogram or about 350 rubles to 799 rubles per pound in cities like Moscow and St. Petersburg, according to Selena Wamucci. In London and Birmingham, UK tea drinkers spend between 9.35 pounds and 46.73 pounds per kilo, or about $5.47 to $27.36 per pound, according to Selena Mamucci. Market research writes that black tea remains dominant despite a shift towards coffee consumption. 
The overall market for tea in Russia is expected to grow modestly over the next few years, with projections indicating a compound annual growth rate of 1.47 from 2024 to 2029. Business Insight Tea is more costly for Sri Lankan consumers as well due to a new 18% value-added tax, but exporters anticipate a record year with revenue estimated at $1.5 billion, a new high. The Tea Exporters Association reports gains in all categories. The average FOB price was about 1,772 rupees, equivalent to $5.85 per kilo. The expansive use of subsidized fertilizer for tea growers has reversed a ban on chemical fertilizers that curtailed the 2022 and 2023 harvest. Under the first phase, 30,000 metric tons of fertilizer would be distributed, with 10,000 metric tons already in the ground. Cranfield University is partnering with Lipton Teas and Infusions to begin field trials testing resilience practices and climate change mitigation to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Tea has the second lowest carbon footprint after tap water. The research will focus on fertilizer use, which contributes about a quarter of total emissions from the cultivation and processing of tea. The project, supported by the Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council and the UK Tea and Infusions Association, aims to improve tea production standards and generate data to benefit the industry. The project is co-led and managed by Dr. Helen Saini, head of R&D Sustainable Agriculture at Lipton, and Andrew Thompson, professor of molecular plant science and head of soil, agri-food, and biosciences at Cranfield University. Climate change is threatening tea-growing regions of East Africa with deeper and longer dry seasons. Trials are now underway in the Karakul region of Kenya to develop solutions to reduce nitrogen fertilizer-related emissions and accelerate the breeding of drought-resistant tea varieties using advanced selection technologies. The partnership will use drone imagery and analysis to improve crop management, precision farming, and high-throughput canopy phenotyping, and develop climate-resistant tea plant strains. Recorded emissions data will also inform a new tea typology led by the UK TIA, the Tea and Herbal Association of Canada, and the Tea Association of the USA. This typology is intended for use by the whole tea industry and will enable tea producers to calculate their carbon footprint with greater accuracy and comparable results across the industry. The trials will also increase the scientific understanding of tea production, leading to better quality tea, less waste, and a lower environmental footprint. Bedford, UK-based Cranfield and Lipton previously worked together to develop an Internet of Things platform dedicated to tea crop management called IOTEA, which incorporates tea plant growth and development modeling. The research finding will contribute to industry-wide progress through the Lipton Tea Innovation and Technology Academy curricula. This academy, inaugurated with the Government of Kenya and the University of Kapanga earlier this year, provides vocational training in degrees up to doctoral level to develop the highest tea cultivation, harvesting, and processing standards. Lipton Tea and Infusions is licensing its intellectual property to the academy for free. Lipton's Chief Research and Innovation Officer, Tessa Hansen, said, quote, Combining our experience with Cranfield University's specialist research capabilities will enable us to identify the key innovations this industry requires. We are moving fast because climate change will not wait. Our profound thanks go to BBSRC and UKTIA as this multi-million euro project will support the entire tea industry and further our mission to create value for all, end quote. A California federal judge ruled that R.C. Bigelow's claim that its tea is manufactured in the USA, quote, is literally false, end quote. The decision is a partial victory for a certified class of tea consumers 
as the company now faces a potential class action trial. Lawyers may press for damages and ask a jury to determine Bigelow's state of mind on the question of misrepresentation and fraud. On Monday, Judge Dean Pregerson of the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California denied a summary judgment for Fairfield, Connecticut-based Bigelow Tea, the largest specialty tea retailer in the U.S., The judge ruled that it is undisputed that the tea in question is grown and processed in foreign countries. The court rejected the argument that the phrase, quote, manufactured in the USA, end quote, refers only to the tea bags and not to the loose leaf tea within them. The judge said in the order, quote, the tea leaves inside are vital to the tea bags as consumers purchase tea bags for the tea itself, end quote. In fact, the tea leaves are not only a component part of the tea bag, they are the very essence of the tea bag. Consumers purchase the products for the consumable, the tea, which just so happens to be conveniently packaged in a bag for steeping, he wrote. Bigelow Tea President and CEO Cindy Bigelow told Tea Biz, quote, We bring in tea from all around the world, including many ingredients from the United States. Those ingredients are then tested, blended, and aged. When the recipes are ready, the tea blends are put into tea bags in one of our three manufacturing facilities in the United States. We produce 2.2 billion tea bags from the teas we blend from around the world. Quote, we are very proud of the fact that all our tea bags are blended and packaged in the USA, end quote, she said. Kimberly Banks and Carol Cantwell filed the class action in 2020, saying they purchased the Bigelow Tea, quote, because they reasonably believe, based on the packaging and advertising, that these products are American-made, end quote. Asserting that the teas are manufactured in the USA violates the California Consumers Legal Remedies Act and common law fraud, intentional representation, and a breach of express warranty, according to the plaintiffs. In an article published in Law 360 describing the ruling, quote, Bigelow argues that the plaintiffs could not have relied on the manufactured in the USA statement because there was insufficient exposure to it or evidence it was materially relied upon. But the judge rejected those assertions. Bigelow contends the statement was not big enough on the back of the box, Judge Pregerson said even though the challenge statement is on the back of the box, it is set off to the side in bold type. Quote, the defendant has not pointed to any evidence to rebut the presumption of class-wide exposure, he wrote. Bigelow said the class failed to provide evidence that the company knew of the challenge statement's falsity or that it was made with fraudulent intent. The Bigelow website explains that some varieties of its tea are grown in the United States on the Charleston Tea Plantation and processed at the company's factory in Wadmala Island, South Carolina, while others are sourced worldwide. The judge also held that the class presented, quote, sufficient admissible evidence, end quote, of damages to present to a jury. The judge stated, quote, generally, whether one made a false statement with knowledge of its falsity or without reasonable grounds to believe it was true, and if it was made with the intent to defraud or to induce reliance, are questions of facts for a jury to decide. Produced by Audavita Studios. Connect your voice to the world.